many of you keep asking me about making the perfect gin and tonic so I've actually come to a gin and vodka distillery on the northeast of Scotland it's near John O'Groat it's a few miles from Castle of May and this is actually owned by some friends Martin and Claire Murray and I thought what a perfect excuse to come and visit have a look around and show you how to make the perfect gin and tonic now before we go in I want to quickly show you behind me is this rockery and they actually use uh, plants from this rockery to put into their gin and vodka so it's, it's quite a, a, a unique place now we're going to go in and we'll meet Martin who's called a master distiller and he'll actually uh, demonstrate how they create the, the gin and vodka and uh, who knows we might even get to taste some Martin how are you? Hi, Brad. How are you? It's really good to see you again. Yeah, you're well. Yeah, very well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for inviting me back up. No, you're uh, very well. It's, it's great to be back again. I've just been on the lookout side mm -hmm. at, the, at the plants. And I was trying to remember, so you were saying that those plants actually go into the, the gin and the vodka? Yeah, we use different botanicals. So, for example, for the summer edition, we've used lemon thyme, lemon verbena, pineapple sage from the rockery. Um, there's also rose root there that we use for rock rose. Um, we started to grow holy grass and um, it's starting to come on. Um, we'll use that in next year's holy grass edition. Okay. And the, uh, I called it a polytunnel, it's not a polytunnel, it's your, your greenhouse. Geodome. It's the geodome. 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 Yeah, it's for the gin, it's a vapour infusion process, similar to the way that Bombay Sapphire make it. Um, we've tweaked it to match the site conditions, so it's an electric heat still. We use water from the burn down the back to cool the condenser. Um, it's a very slow process. I've been distilling today and it's taken about 11 hours to do the still for me. It's a long time. It's a very slow process, but it, it makes a very nice light gin. Um, which is to our, uh, our taste and um, we allow it then to set overnight we dilute it down and then it's ready to go You've got the name Elizabeth, why Elizabeth? We picked the name um, from a lady who used to stay locally here and she loved Kate Ness and also loved the gin and Dubai so it's named after her okay. uh, Fantastic name Yes, so I'm just about to wax a bottle. Um, we do this by hand for every single bottle that we've ever produced. They're all bottled here in house, so it's about the challenge trying to keep up with the man, but we wouldn't ever change it. So each of the bottles will be hand numbered and then hand waxed. So you zip it in some nice warm blue wax, run it off a little bit just so you get rid of the excess wax and it starts to slow down, and then flip it up and dip it in some cold water, normally about 8 seconds and that gives you enough then to use. Now it's your turn, come on round. Do you have a go? No, no I'm worried. <laughs> you make it look easy. It's, it's, it is, yeah. <laughs> so just, just, so, so how? So you can either do it two ways, um, some of our staff dip it in angle, mm -hmm. um, which is the way my mother-in-law did it, and then some angle it straight, which is the way my dad does it. So, you put it in the wax so that it's submerged about there, mm -hmm. take it out, keep mm -hmm. it turn, turned and twisted until you see the wax slow down, move it upright and then dunk it in cold water for about 8 seconds. This is the most nerve wracking thing that I've ever <laughs> had to do. Okay, so tell me if I'm going wrong, yeah? Yeah. A bit there? Yep, that's it. Now just run it off, twist and keep it at the angle. Yeah. It'll start to slow down, normally 8 seconds on that as well. And then what to do is flip it up and then quickly dunk it in the cold water for about 8 seconds as well. You can give it a swirl around, it'll help it cool a wee bit. There you go, and that should be you. Really? Is that, is that okay? Good. Yeah, good, it's really good. Not bad for a first attempt. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. <laughs> I can't believe that. That is, that is so nerve wracking. And it's interesting you said about the, the twist because when I teach people pouring wine, I always um, say you twist the bottle. Right. This is interesting that that's how you, you, yeah, you do yeah, that. It's, it's the same way you hold it, you twist and turn and it runs off. So, yeah, so that's not bad? That's good, yeah. That'll go in our shop. 
Really? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. You recognise it for that little bit at the top yeah, of that. Yeah, everybody's got the, the first thing you do, you've always got your own signature mark. That's oh, your really? Signature mark, yeah. Okay, I, need, I need to take a picture so I recognise it. <laughs> yeah, see where it goes in his travels, yeah. That's fantastic. Okay. And in the labelling process, I noticed that they're not, because I remember when I first came here, they were they were sticky labels. Yeah, that's right. When now it's 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 done, in, it, you have them done in a, in a away from here, don't you? Absolutely, they're printed now. In Germany, um, they're fantastic. They've got such a nice tactile feel. They have, yeah. But they just take the presentation of the product to the next level. Um, the, the the ink is baked on um, in a very slow process, and then it's left to cool down and dry out, and then they're shipped over to us. And you can see it's got some really nice print, like the grass barcode's really nice, and then it's got the small details of the butterflies, and you can. See Each of the bottles are hand numbered, so um, every bottle that's ever gone out of here has been hand numbered. Um, for the gin, we number it directly onto the bottle, but for the vodka, we do want it to do something a little bit different. So there you can see it's a sticker that we apply to the side of the bottle. Um, it's got the batch number and vintage, and then um, the bottle number and the distillery's initials. That's me. Um, yeah, that's on every single bottle. So, Martin, the, the bottle I've just done, is it going to have a, a number? Yeah, would you like to pick? You can pick can I pick a number? Yeah, you can pick really? a number. There you can, go. 750? 750. So that's easy for me to remember. And if it goes on its travels. So if anybody sees the bottle with 750 of, of Rock Rose, uh, is this vodka? It's a Holy Grass this vodka, vodka. yes. Yeah, so. so if you see the, the vodka, then uh, that's the one that I that I waxed. Yeah, and you'll recognise it from the little telltale. Um, tuft. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't, you can't miss. Unique to, Unique. to me. Yeah. So there, that will go on its travels um, tomorrow. Amazing. So my last question is: Do you have any? Because the thing about with my social media, I'm always giving people tips and advice on how to do things. What would you say is the perfect gin and tonic? So what we always advise is when you're pouring your own gin and tonic for the first time for a new gin is to pour the gin neat, have a smell, have a taste of it, get used to the profile of the gin, and then slowly add tonic, because what you'll find is that each gin has a ratio that suits your palate differently. So, for example, I drink the Rock Rose gin at a different ratio to my wife, so I'll drink it typically two parts tonic to one part gin, whereas Claire likes it longer, she'll take a three part tonic to one part gin drink, and everybody's different. So that's the way, if I was pouring a gin and tonic, I would offer it to someone 50-50 um, and then allow, allow them to top it up with a bottle to their own perfect strength. Okay, that's, that's really good to know. And uh, and of course my, my etiquette tip is always to remind people that when you're having your, your pre-dinner drinks or pre-lunch drinks is it's always 12.30 or 6.30. That's the kind of time that I, I advise people. So as long as they remember that and, and listen to your yeah. advice, they'll have the perfect gin and tonic. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Regular Rock Rose gin. That was our first edition and that's um, generally available all over. It's been a big success for us. It's shipped um, online from our website, but you can also buy it in small specialty wine merchants. We've got the Navy Strength Edition, which is more like a cocktail gin. It's 57%. We use that for Negronis typically. And then we've got the Holy Grass Vodka and the Seasonal Editions. So the first two seasons we've released this year, spring, summer. And we've got autumn and winter to come. So we're now in the shop. Uh, Martin, I see you've got a few certificates up there. Have you won a few awards? Yeah, it's gone really well in the last few years. We've won um, enough awards to fill a bookcase. And our shop just can't cope with demand at the moment. So we're in the process of building a new, larger, improved retail area that will have limited editions only available in the shop. So it's worth a trip to Dunnett. <laughs>